is um, one of, um, so there are two types of company you could invest in in Pakistan, for example. There are those who are domestic TAM, you know, where they're addressing the Pakistani opportunity by a relevant segment, what have you. And over time, they may be able to build an export model, but primarily they're focused on the local market. So if, I, if you were to take two lenses, which is, you know, investing in a business that sees Pakistan as its core, or investing in a business that is an exporter. Okay, so for example, I was an investor in a company called Modern Eastern Turkey, which is a fashion marketplace, 90% export, actually 80 plus percent export, brilliant. Turkish lira is tanking, you are doing dollar and euro revenues to Turkish and Muslim diaspora women in England, Germany, France, and the United States. You can't lose because you get tons of trade subsidy, you get tons of exit bank loans, and you get dollar currencies, and you pay your suppliers in 45 days. Bit of a winner. So the reality is between domestic TAM in Pakistan, between export, and second point, B2B and B2C, because B2C, challenging consumer market, deep TAM, tons of opportunity, <coughs> pretty difficult penetration opportunities, not easy customer acquisition, not simple. B2B, a lot of enterprise players have emerged in Pakistan, built brilliant export businesses, further to my question to Samir, been able to build penetration into the US enterprise industry, into, into corporate sector, into hotel groups, financial services, and so on. India's done an enormous <coughs> job at that, of building you know, export-based um, BPO type businesses. So two lenses, you know, Pakistan domestic, Pakistan export, and um, B2B versus B2C. I don't know if anyone wants to pick up those and go around the table <coughs> and give your observation. Sure, I can answer. Um, so I, I guess in terms of uh, domestic versus um, export, yeah. for us, we're primarily fintech investors. Um, and so for us, uh, you know, localized solutions <coughs> is, is kind of the, the name of the game. Yeah. And so uh, for us, it's going to be mostly domestic driven. And we're looking for, you know, great founders in Pakistan and all the other markets that we invest in that are, that are building, you know, local solutions. Um, you know, w with that said, we're, of course, uh, you know, not adverse to uh, companies starting to expand outside of Pakistan, you know, and I've had numerous conversations with, uh, with with founders and other investors in the room. It's, for some companies, it's been a necessity, you know, given what's happening with the currency and the macro situation, you know, you do have a lot of companies that have, are going from Pakistan, you know, to the UAE and then, you know, Saudi eventually is at least the narrative. And so, uh, you know, execution will be key there, but I think, um, I think focusing on the localized economy and, and kind of the domestic market for us is, is kind of, um, is, 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 is a must. You know. And in terms of, you know, B to C versus B to B. We do like. I think you know we're MENA investors, and so sometimes it's a it's kind of a tale of a tale of two markets. You've got you know the high GDP per capita, um, low population centers like UAE, like uh, you know, UAE Saudi in particular, um, and then you've got kind of the longer tail uh, economies like Egypt, Pakistan, you know Morocco, <coughs> Algeria, Tunisia. If you kind of add it all up, and so what we tend to see is um, more picks and shovels businesses in the. In smaller population markets for us. Um, so not quite enterprise, but definitely, you know, B2B. And then with the, the higher population, you know, you can't ignore B2C um, in terms of, you know, the countries that are 100 to 100 million people. So obviously, Egypt and Pakistan, we'll, we'll see more consumer stuff there, but we tend to gravitate more towards B2B, actually. Um, we like kind of like unsexy businesses that nobody really knows about that kind of, you know, that, that just kind of continue to generate revenue, lower, lower risk, et cetera. So that, that's for us, please. Got it. Yeah, we, uh, we uh, I don't know if any of you read uh, uh, this article uh, Amar Habib Khan and I wrote in Profit uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, we essentially talked about, if you didn't, you should. If you want it, I'll, I'll WhatsApp it. It's worth a read. It's really well written, even though I, uh, if I say it for myself. Also, essentially what the business, what the, what the article said a year and a half ago was uh, the uh, without the infrastructure, the tech revolution won't happen. So we uh, uh, eat our own cooking. So we essentially just focus on big building block businesses in uh, fintech, uh, mobility, and uh, energy, and so on. For example, and this came out of losing money and getting our asses kicked on higher value businesses, businesses that were, that were up, high up on the stack because the basic stack in Pakistan doesn't exist. For example, uh, a Korean entrepreneur wanted to build a big data center business 
and within two weeks he realized that you can't find reliable, cheap energy. So, so a lot of these, the, so we, we went through about a dozen of these experiences and said, let's go earlier in the stack. So it's obviously, be, by, by definition, it's going to be B2B, and it's core stack. So it's energy, it's basic fintech, uh, uh, mobility, and so on. So for example, electrifying the transport network. So we think these are generational opportunities. Once this, the basic stack is built, that's it. Uh, there are huge monopoly, I, I don't know if legally I'm allowed to use the word monopoly, but there are huge monopoly rents and no one else can displace you. So the ultimate moat is an incredible amount of capital to own those basic building blocks. So we like those businesses a lot, but they don't lend themselves to classic early stage investing or writing toward the dollar checks. So we still think these are their venture returns possible, uh, but some of those look like private equity. Uh, some, some of them will be ventured. So, so we think fundamentally that's the place that is a great use of time. Uh, we think, in given the cycle and we were seeing market exit, this is the perfect time for things are better priced, talent is better priced, uh, and you can actually go make some bold bets given what's happening in the market. Uh, and in about a year and a half, all this will dry up because it'll all be taken. Uh, so we couldn't be more excited about my Pakistan than is right now. Uh, and it's a helpful contrast to spend time in Saudi Arabia. It's in a very, very different place. So while the demographics look so very similar, that has nothing to do with why we're excited about Pakistan or about Saudi Arabia. So in summary, it's a great time to build fundamental building block businesses uh, that we did not have the chance to do in Korea or in Australia or in Taiwan, but we do have a chance in Pakistan. And shame on us if we can't take advantage of that. And on top of that, many of you will build great businesses. Frankly, you have a bit more time to do it because unless a build, building box exists, you won't be successful. Uh, and it's fundamentally B2B. Great. Any other observations? <coughs> yeah, yeah I, I would add something on the uh, foreign exchange yeah. uh, arbitrage. Uh, I, I, I personally think that it should not be the uh, key differentiator just because it's not sustainable. It's very hard to predict. Uh, should, uh, should, should certain companies uh, leverage the current situation? Definitely. But uh, can you build uh, a sustainable company just because uh, you know the local currency is uh, uh, being devalued, uh, you know, every every single year? Uh, probably not. So it's not sustainable. So it's it's being devalued now, but uh, potentially, you know, when the situation stabilizes, uh, you you might lose this kind of uh, competitive advantage. Um, so, uh, with regard to the, you know, other other points, uh, I'm totally agree with like the previous speakers. Um, we would um, uh, we we believe that you know certain in certain industries the infrastructure is not is not there yet. It's very nascent for you know Pakistan in terms of uh, pretty much everything, even like the source for talent, talent itself, source for talent being institutions or <coughs> companies uh, that uh, are not there yet or not there yet in a, in a decent uh, number of companies um, and uh, you know the fintech infrastructure uh, if compared for example to India with the UPI um, so uh, but it will come um, and um, hopefully in the, in the next two, two three years it, it, it will be much like more mature ecosystem which would provide more opportunities. Any other points on that? Uh, sure. Uh, I'd like to add, on, in terms of the local TAM yeah. specifically, um, so Pakistan definitely boasts that, that huge TAM, right? When you think about consumers, these are it's a large growing economy, young population, mm -hmm. all of that. Um, but there, is, there are fundamental differences between the other emerging economies that might have been able to tap into that versus Pakistan. Um, if you take the example of Egypt, for that matter, um, the, their, their ability or propensity to consume those digital products might be a tad higher than in Pakistan, purely because of the fact that there isn't that much uh, fragmentation of the of, of the market itself. 
Pakistan on the other hand has 17 different languages. Building out that consumer product with uh, the same thing that could be more adapt is actually quite hard. So you'd have to think about uh, truly catering to that local market to, to be able to distribute that. And that, I guess, comes with the kind of infrastructure plays that, that, has, that are the building blocks and then eventually start building out companies that uh, cater to that, that consumer audience. So that's a really interesting point because if you take India, similar thing of cultures, languages, provinces, etc. Yeah. And, and have, you know, inv having invested in uh, Big Basket and the same thing. You, language doesn't work, marketing collateral doesn't work in one place in India versus another. Yeah, so you absolutely. know, you're absolutely correct, you can't, right? Yeah, so at that point, so there are two things to consider there, right? So one, um, can those products be built uh, across these yeah. diverse um, uh, diverse population? But the second thing also goes in terms of uh, you need to reach that kind of critical mass to be able to consume those products in the first place. So in India, that sort of happened after a while. Sure, the digital revolution that started early on, but that kind of consumption really kicked in really only over the last couple of years, right? Um, so that for Pakistan is, I think, uh, a difficult challenge, but it, it, it should slowly uh, bridge that gap over the years.